Hey yo, what is up guys, Akash here back with another video and today I'll be building a long old project that I had thought of when I had an older AC I had this problem where sometimes it used to get too cold, sometimes it used to get too hot so I constantly had to uh, play with my remote to kind of perfectly adjust the temperature of my room by switching on and off the AC. So today what we'll be doing is we'll be controlling an air conditioner using an Arduino using infrared technology and uh, we'll be basically mimicking uh, a function of uh, infrared remote control so this is not a project specific video but we'll be able to learn today uh, how we can uh, transmit infrared signals and basically imitate the infrared remote controls or how can we read infrared signals on the Arduino using an IR sensor which a remote control sends and we'll be also uh, looking at the DHT11 which we will be using as a sensor to sense the temperature of the room. I have done a uh, video on the DHT11 previously do check that out from here. So what we'll be doing today is sensing the temperature from the DHT11 and when we find the room temperature to be ambient and satisfactory we will accordingly toggle the air conditioner but not using the remote the Arduino will do that and I know that in modern uh, air conditioners that feature kind of is inbuilt wherein there's this cutoff but yeah why not have this cool project going on so if you're interested in something like that let's start with it <laughs> I order all my PCBs from jlcpcb.com. They offer 10 PCBs for $2 only. They also offer quick turnaround time and can produce PCBs as fast as within 24 hours. To design PCBs, you can head over to EasyEDA and then generate Gerber files for your project. Now head over to jlcpcb.com, upload your Gerber files and get the PCBs manufactured for cheap. They are currently also offering discounts on shipping. So firstly, the main brains of our project, which is the Arduino Uno, you can use the Raspberry Pi or an ESP8266 as well to do this project. Uh, using an ESP8266 is fairly easy with the code and the technique that we'll be using. But uh, considering that Raspberry Pi needs a different kind of Python code, uh, that porting might be difficult. But yes, with the GPIO pins, that porting is possible and this project is possible with the Raspberry Pi or any other uh, com single board computer or a microcontroller as well. But for the sake of simplicity and availability, we'll be using the Arduino Uno today. Moving on, uh, to sense the temperature and humidity, we have a sensor which is the DHT11. In a raw form, you can find the DHT11 like this with the four pins. Uh, only three pins are for our use for the DHT11 and, and those three pins are broken out over here. In the breakout board, the first pin is the signal pin, then we have the voltage pin and the third pin as the ground or the negative pin. Similarly, we have three pins uh, out of the four which are useful for us for this project purpose we can use uh, we will be using this module but you can go ahead with the raw module as well the third part that is very essential for us is uh, infrared led so this is not a normal led if i apply voltage to it we will not be able to see light coming out of it with our naked eyes but infrared is captured by the camera so when later in the project uh, i light this led up i will not be able to see it with my bare eyes but you will be able to see it on the camera because uh, camera does catch infrared and it is visible on the infrared and we do see similar type of LED over here as well in a remote. Finally, we have this infrared receiver uh, which is a three-legged uh, component. We have other version of it as well. In the, these versions, the three pins, one stands for voltage, then the other one stands for ground and the third one is for signal. Uh, I personally like this big one in prototyping projects for these uh, to, for the ease of handling this and yeah it seems better to me but for small projects or for uh, commercial devices you'll find these small uh, infrared receivers so for this project I'll be using this you might find these type of LEDs in these uh, sensor modules as well you'll find these sensor modules widely in projects uh, by hobbies so this is a basic proximity sensor using infrared and yes there is a sensor over here and there's this IR LED or uh, you can salvage one IR LED from here as well or any old remote that you might have 
so these are the parts and for we'll be quickly looking at what the circuit diagram for us would be so for the first half of the project what we will need is the code of the IR signal that this remote sends out when I press a power on or off or a temperature up or down button. So for that we'll have to rig up a small circuit wherein we'll have to connect this IR receiver with an Arduino, have some code in this Arduino and when and we'll basically record what code is sent by this remote to the Arduino or the infrared sensor and we'll be mimicking that same code in the second stage. So for the first stage, we will be building this basic circuit wherein we'll be connecting this infrared receiver with the Arduino. So as we saw that the infrared receiver has three pins, uh, this middle pin is the VCC pin, this pin is the ground pin and this pin is the signal pin. So that will be connected like this. So the VCC pin on this, which is the middle pin will be connected to Arduino's 3.3 pin. The ground pin on the infrared will be connected to the ground pin of the Arduino and the pin number two of the Arduino Uno will be connected to the signal pin, which is this one over like this. So let me just quickly connect these two boards accordingly. So I've connected the infrared receiver according to our circuit diagram to the Arduino Uno. Next, we need to connect the Arduino Uno to my computer, which I do like this. And we can move on to the coding part of the Arduino Uno so, so that we are ready to receive signals on this transmitter. So let's move on to our computer. So you will be able to find all the codes that I'll be using and all the relevant libraries that are required in this project in my GitHub page, which I have uh, linked in the description below. And you'll find all the relevant links in the Instructables page for the same as well. There you will find the IR code receive uh, code. Open that and copy the code onto your Arduino IDE. Once you've copied the code to the Arduino IDE, head over to the Tools tab, select the Arduino and the correct COM port and just hit the Upload button. The blinking RXTX LEDs confirm that the code gets uploaded. We also see a done uploading uh, message on the IDE. Once the code gets uploaded, you can head over to the serial monitor. Now, as we see, the serial monitor says that it's ready to receive IR signals. So we are ready to record the IR code that we want. What we'll have to do is bring our remote control pretty close to the infrared sensor and just press any button. And as soon as we press a button, we'll see on the a serial monitor that there are a series of numbers that are printed. These numbers are what the magic is behind the infrared LED and we need to imitate these numbers only while transmitting using the IR LED that we have. So you can copy paste this entire code or a series of numbers as it is on a notepad because we'll be needing these numbers later in our second part of the code. Similarly, this was when I switched the switch on button when the display went on. I'll have to record the switch off button. So when I press the switch off, we'll see again on the serial monitor, there are a series of numbers that are returned. Generally in older AC remotes, both the on and off button have the same infrared code, but in more advanced and modern ones, they have different uh, series of numbers. So that is what is the case in my AC remote. You can check uh, by pressing the button if it's same or not. So I did check and it's different for my case. So I'll be uh, noting down both these series in separate folders and we'll be using them soon. Once this step is done, we can move on to the second step, which is our main circuit. And we can disconnect the Arduino and prepare it for the second circuit. Now we do not need the uh, IR receiver. So I'll just remove that and keep it at the side. And now for the second step, we need a DHT11, the Arduino and IR LED. So I'll be using a smaller one, which is this one. We need a 2N2222 transistor, NPN transistor, and we need a 470 ohm resistor. For the simplicity of the circuit, I'll be building the circuit on a breadboard this time. So first let's look at the circuit diagram of the same. So this circuit is a little bit complex than what we had earlier. The simple connections first is in between the DHT11 and the Arduino wherein the three pins of the DHT11 which is the voltage pin, the ground pin and the signal pin will go to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino, the ground pin and the A0 which is this pin right over here on the Arduino and the connections for the DHT11 is that only. 
while the connection for the infrared leds are a little bit complex as the infrared led will be driven using our npn transistor that we have mm -hmm. over here which is the 2n2222 so we will have that connected to pin digital pin 3 mm -hmm. on the arduino mm -hmm. and the pin 3 will be connected to a resistor which will be connected to a transistor so the connection for the transistor is simple the emitter which is the leftmost pin while looking at the curved side of the transistor this is the emitter will go to ground the base pin which is the middle pin will go to the resistor and the collector pin on the transistor which is the rightmost pin while looking at the curved side it will go to the negative terminal of the led for the led the negative terminal will be the shorter leg and the longer leg will go to the voltage which can be 3.3 or 5 volts so i'll quickly make these connections on the breadboard so the mess with all the wires have been created and we have made this circuit wherein these three wires go to a0 vcc which is 5 volts and the signal pin and the ground pin over here as well uh, and we see that the base of the small transistor is connected to digital pin 13 and all the rest of the connections uh, are made according to this diagram now what we can do is connect this arduino again to our computer and be ready with the second part of the code and now we can move back to our laptop with the circuit connected so we need to head back to the github page which contains the ir ac control code this is the main code that we'll be using and make sure that you copy all the libraries present in the libraries folder to your local arduino libraries folder which is essential to make the code run so now you can copy uh, this code uh, this already has the values for my particular remote uh, you might have to edit those according to the values that you saw earlier on the com port uh, with the first part of the project so i'll quickly jump on to the main code for my side and yes i have the both the codes copied one is the raw data off code which is basically when I press the remote control to switch off my air conditioner that is that code and the raw data on code has the on values what the code is doing is as we can look over here when the temperature recorded by the DHT11 is more than 29 degrees the AC will switch on which is done by this command and on the other hand if the temperature is lesser than 26 degrees that means it's pretty cold I might have to switch off my AC and that is what I do by this part of the code. So this is basically, uh, I, I keep a four, 3 to 4 degree gap between these two conditions so that the AC is not triggered very frequently and we have some gap between the AC on and off switch cycle so that the AC does not get damaged and this type of method is also used in something called a Schmidt trigger. I'll add a link about the Schmidt trigger in the description below as well if you're interested in that. So now what we need to do is in the tools menu select the correct board and the com port and we can go ahead and hit the upload button here as well. So once the code upload is done you can go ahead and look at the serial port and on the serial port the 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 starting will say DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor then after every couple of seconds you will see a temperature reading so currently my room is at a temperature of 27 degrees as soon as it gets below 20, uh, 26 degrees which is 25 degrees my AC will be switched off using the infrared LED so it is important to have this LED pointed towards the air conditioner in a correct manner because only that will trigger your AC on and off and as soon as the temperature will fall below 26 degrees this infrared LED will send the off codes and the AC will turn off when the temperature gets above 29 degrees that is 30 degrees or more the infrared LED will again toggle the AC on and the AC will switch on so I did test the project with the Arduino DHT11 and the infrared LED for my particular room and another version of this project is already plugged in right now which is controlling my air conditioner since morning and it has done a pretty good job my room temperature has remained stable since morning between the range of 29 and 26 degrees my AC gets on and off 
automatically i have no tension at all and i'm living a good life in an ambient temperature so yes that was about it for today's project and how you can control any of your infrared enabled devices which are which can be controlled using an infrared remote using an arduino so you can make the arduino act as a pseudo remote when you attach an infrared led to it what we did today was uh, control that device using some automation the automation was provided by the sensor you can have this applied on various things so for example if you connect this ir transmitter to your esp module and connect the esp module to any smart device like the echo using that you will be able to control your devices with voice automation i had done a voice automation tutorial with the esp and the amazon echo uh, or the alexa you may say you will find the video over here do check that out you can incorporate and inculcate both the videos to basically control your infrared devices and not mess with relays and heavy electrical stuff while controlling them using voice commands so that was about it from my side today on this project and this technique hope this was useful for you do let me know your thoughts and any suggestions in the comments section below thanks for watching subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now also hit the bell icon to stay notified this is our first signing off